was born with a purpose. Are you with me? I said Jesus was born with purpose. He's not like some of us. We just born. Our parents just came together and had no plan for you. But suddenly I'm pregnant. Nobody sat and reasoned at this cause. Because let me say this to you. Okay. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 20. I want to show you something before we go there. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 18. Look what it says. And verse 18, it says, Every purpose is established by counsel. Did you see that? Every purpose is established. So, how can the white supposed to counsel each other, speak with each other before they give birth to, to you and I? A lot of us, our parents doesn't even know why we're here. But God had a purpose for us. Y'all didn't hear me. Let me repeat that. I said, our parents doesn't even know why you are here. But God had a purpose for us. I said, God, look at him. He said, God had a purpose for you. There are some parents who even regret that you were here. They tried to get rid of you, but because of the purpose of God, you are here. Y'all don't want to speak the truth.
Not the baby Jesus, because imagine he grew up as a plant. He read it. 
That's true. 
jostle the woman. And then the woman, because they have a man, they got to go to. So God's going to judge them. I said, God is going to judge them. I said, God is going to judge them. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? I was looking at a program on, on, on CNN, and this homosexual, this, you know, let me call it a nice word, homosexual, because I know we were not big and high in Or the Jamaican call him Imshi. The Imshis asked the president of Ghana, or of Kenya, to legalize why he's, why he's against homosexual. He said, because the Bible said to produce the God of a man and a woman. I said, nothing is going to change our constitution because that's what the Bible said. To produce for production, God said to Adam, multiply, multiply. I said, for you to multiply, you don't need a steam, you need a heave. Are you hearing me? I said, are you hearing me? That's my symphony, yo. Girls and young women, make sure you smell sweet and dress up. Don't let them out, out dress you. You understand nothing. And the most important thing, Papa, let your beauty be on the inside. Your wife is not your property. She's your responsibility. 
humility. They don't clap too much. They don't clap too fast. It's the class of many who are married. But you want that fight, you know that. I can get married. Be in the chase. Charlotte, uh, 
the Bible teacher. They push them into the purpose. The Bible said a child can be known from small. You can know the purpose of child from small. The Bible said in Proverbs, look at them, look at them. We have no time to look at them, we look at people. Observe them. That's why that's you can't take care of one way, one, two, four. You can't watch a tree, you are fine. Purpose. I hear many sisters in, those, in this house and other places said that my call is their stepfather. The father of the daddy. Okay. Alright. Okay. Okay. My call is you is you is, is you train over. No, you make that man to be a lazy man. Because you're looking at when my uncle give me the money, shame. Oh my God. Oh my God. Brother and sister, let's live with purpose. It's not too late. There's a new year coming. And the mistake we have made in 2022, we must not make it in 2023. Are you hearing me? And 2023 is not in two weeks, it's starting today. I said 2023 starts from today. It must be today for you. Are you hearing me? You must make up your mind. God told me, he said, son, the people that are in that name with purpose. They don't know why they are lying. They don't know why they're coming to church. They don't know why they're serving me. They don't know why they are Christian. Hello, brother and sister. God is saying to us, we must no longer live a 
life without purpose. Why are you? Why do you want to wake up tomorrow? To be a user to the society? Why do you want to wake up tomorrow? Why? Why? Why do you want to live? If God just come to you today and said, my son, my daughter, why should I keep you alive tomorrow? What will you say to him? Because the mommy justice Christmas God. Oh, that's when I was keeping alive because justice Christmas. Why should I keep my breath inside of you? God sent Isaiah to the king and said, King, put your house in order. Tomorrow you're going to die. Tomorrow you're going to die. But the king give God some reasons why he should be alive. Are oh, you already here with me? I said, if the king of God just said, the prophet to you said, tomorrow you're going to die. But if you give me good reason to keep you alive, I'm going to think about what would you say? King said, God, I know, I, I know I'm wicked. I know, I know I have done a lot of bad things, but guess what? Remember the good things. And if you give me some more time, I, I, I can go back to those good things. That's the rocky boy. There's some good. We'll give 50 more years. And if you read the story, you get more wickedness. I'm glad you would have done it. But I want to prove it things that I want. What would, if God should come to you, these young people, and said, why should you be alive tomorrow? God, we can't be mature here. That's the reason. God, we can't be here. That's the reason. Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. We must live purposeful life. I remember many times this happened to me. On verse 16. I would watch, I would be watching nice program and God was said leave and go and pray. I said, and you know inside God is, he said, when I finish, God is asking which one is more important. Spending time with God or watching that flame? Which one is more important? The purpose. Which one is more important? It says in verse 16, but rise and stand for I have appeared to you for this purpose. God has appeared to you. You see, a lot of times we pray, Lord, I want to see you. Why? God said, why? What's the purpose you want to see me? I appeared to you for this purpose. This is Paul. What's the purpose? To make you a minister. Manduro Moshata. Listen to me. You are called. You are saying God has anointed you to make you a minister. Somebody shout amen. I said, somebody shout I'm a minister. That's why God wants you in his army to make you a soldier and a minister. I'm a witness both of the things which you have seen and of the things which I will yet reveal to you. Are you here with me? Verse 17, I will, be, I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I will now send you. I will deliver you from them and I will send you back to them. Listen, look at this. So open the eyes. I'm not sending you for you to talk, talk. No, I'm saying to open the eyes. Purpose. I said purpose. Lift your hands out of you. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, let your anointing fall on your people. Ramando Roboshata Roboshata. Ikaramando Roboshata. Lord, open the ears that they will hear what you say. You shall be sending us not only for us to see what we, what we see, but what you are going to reveal to us.
to God. Father, you have given us that anointing to deliver people from the power of Satan. And bring them into your own life. As I was preparing this message, man of young, young man, I was telling you, God has healed you. I said, God has healed you. I said, God has. I did not say God is going to heal you. I said, God has healed you. I said, God has healed you. As I was preparing the message, God showed me, you said, I have healed him. I have healed him. I have healed it. Come, 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 come. I have healed it. Oh, he took your infirmity. I said, he took your infirmity. I said, he himself has taken your infirmity. Do you believe that God said, I have healed you. I have healed you. I have healed you. And as God began to show me, I saw God was saying to put my hands upon you. And I declare you're healed. In your spirit, in your soul, in your body. In your spirit, in your soul, in your body. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Be healed. Be healed. And don't you ever speak words like, I did not, I did not receive what I expected. Because right now you're receiving what you need. It's beyond your expectation. I said it's beyond your expectation. It's beyond your, the Bible said unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ever ask or imagine. It's beyond. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You're healed. You're healed. As well as for the to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan. Satan has power, but the one in us is more powerful. It's all powerful, and he has given it to you. He has given it to you. He has given it. Satan has no power over us. How are you? Still coughing? Still feeling the cold? It is finished. I've prayed for you. And I said, Lord, I uplift. Not Lord, please uplift. He said, Lord, I uplift. Because He has anointed me for this. You can go back to this. I said, You have been anointed for this. Friday night I had a dream and I called every time I 
in my spirit is something. Anyhow, I woke when I was in Friday morning, in fact, Saturday morning around 4, 4 o'clock. I dreamed, I had a dream. Hallelujah. This was wonderful. I left one place. It's like I'm on the beach. And I just crossed a little river, a little, a little, a little bottle, let's say bottle. But for me to get back where I was, there were many waters, many rivers, beautiful rivers. I said beautiful. Then I was smiling. Every time I cross one is another one. Every time I cross one, there was another one. Every time I, I even go into people's house, and when I come to their house, there's a river there, I gotta cross it. And it was so beautiful. If you see waters, not mud water, blue water, clean water, clear like crystal. So Saturday, about three o'clock, I went to pray, and the spell came back to it came back to me. It's a law. Then this prophet of the Lord that prophesied to me twice came to my spirit, and I said, "Let me go on Facebook." To ask him. When I was a baby, he was right here. He was right here like he was waiting for me. And I said, I, want, I said, you are a prophet, right? I said, I know some prophet knows how to interpret dreams. Interpret this for me. He said, he's going to do it for me. He's going to interpret it today. He's going to interpret it today. But I know what the Bible says. When you speak of God, they speak of the Spirit. John chapter 7 says, Oh, your belly shall flow rivers of living. Live in Ezekiel not a lot of waters. Are you hearing me? Knee deep. And there were some I could have crossed, and there were some I got to swim. But I know that anything the Lord gave to me is not for me only, it's for the ministry. It's for the ministry. Something good is about to happen. I said, Something good is going to happen. It's happening already, it's going to only get stronger. Come and lift your hands and give him purpose. So Lord, show me my purpose. I want to live a life of purpose. I'm tired of being purposeless. I want to walk and live in purpose. I can leave legacy for my children. I can leave legacy for, for people. Hallelujah. The Lord shall take you out of this world before the rapture. What do you want to leave behind you? What must, what must people be speaking about you? What must they be talking about you? What are you leaving behind? Will your children be glad that you're God or sad that you're God? Will people miss you or die? With your family cry. I said, Lord, you know, I'm glad. You, you think they cry for you, you think they're glad you're glad. Or they will say, Oh Lord, why have you taken this verse? The Bible said, The wicked dies and you forget it. You say to Sharon, when you pass at the burial, you see a, a tomb with a black umbrella, it was a wicked portion that. You ever hear about that? In Suriname, they said, and you see a black man burning the bare ground. It was a wicked person. That's how they mark wicked people. Would you want them to put a black man burning at yours? You can change all of that now. God said that we were living purpose in sleep. No purpose. When you have purpose, you don't miss church like this. You grieve. When you can be the house of God. Like my sister said, when she leave work, she rush to church. You don't want to miss because I can miss the word for my life. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Can you imagine? In the book of Luke, the Bible said there was a woman 
Jesus left her in the temple. She was there for 18 years. And she was bent over. And that day Jesus was present. If she was absent that day. It, I said, not eight days. 18 years. 18 years. She's going to church like this. Bend over.
as a purpose. A young man used to go to church very early, and the first person he would see was a young, was a young sister. Every time he go to church, the first person he would see was a young sister. And before he be honest with God, he wanted to play games with God. And he went to pray, Sister Rachel. He said, Lord, please, let the first woman I see when I go to church, let her be my wife. God says, son, you're sure? He said, yes, Lord. Because he knows who the first person is. He should have said, Lord, I like her. I want her to be my wife. What do you say? No, no. Lord, let the first woman I see be my wife. God said, you're sure? He said, yes, Lord. God said, deal. That son with the man dress up, he went to buy a new suit. Dress up to the best. Went to church early like before. Open church door and said, I'm with him. He went too early. <laughs> there is a whole woman who will keep coming in. No, 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 she, no, she, no, 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 she, no, she. God said, you sin. And when he should have been known all the time. You don't play a game with God. You made an agreement, and I'll stick to it. Many of us who have made an agreement, Lord, I will serve you. Let's get back to that agreement. Children, God is speaking to every one of you here. Make an agreement with God. Make an agreement that you will serve God. You remember Him in the days of your youth. Not when you go have teeth and you bend over. If you should reach that place, serve God and see what God will do with your life. Okay. See, God will make you the top, not the bottom. First and not the last. Are uh, you hearing me, youths? Make a prayer with God. God loves you. Come into an agreement with God. You're not too old. You're not too young, in fact. David was 17. Joseph was 17. Samuel was 12. At the age of 12, Jesus began to go to the temple. You're not too young. Live purposeful life. I want parents, to, parents, please, when you go home, ask your children, if you're the father of that child, fathers, that's your truth. But those say, my parents, you father and mother, ask your children, what do you want to be? You see, we got to work with them. What do you want to be? I want to tell you, work with them. Push them. Push them. What do you want to be? What do you want to be? If any one of them said they want to be like Beyonce, slap them. Very hard. Block them up with one slap. When they wake up, say, what did you say? And they will change. Listen to me. No, 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 this is serious. Ask your children, what do you want to be? What do you want to be? You see, you're teaching them purpose. You're teaching them to think. Even in school, they ask you. Somebody came to me and said, they asked me in school, and I said, me, no. I said, how oh, old are you? You, not my children. I thought about somebody outside. I said, what? You don't know what you want to do? If you don't know what you want to do, the devil is going to find something for you to do. Parents, let's work with our children. Let's work with our children. Parents, let's work with our children. Say amen. amen. Don't give up on them. Don't give up on them. And they're your children. Put purpose inside of them. Put purpose inside of them. Speak over their lives. Lay hands on them. Don't wait for passing the hands on them. Your hands are blessed as your children. Fathers is your responsibility. In the Old Testament, fathers used to bless their children. Are you hearing me? And speak a word over their life. Because what you speak 
No man can rub that on us. Parents, bless them. I don't care how mischievous they are. Your blessing can rub up every sign and mischievousness from them. Bless them. Fathers, bless your children. Bless them. If you don't, if your father is not there, mother, bless them. Lay your hands on them. Lay your hands on them. They're not behaving bad when they're sleeping go over them. And command the demon. Say, you demon of rebellion, I repeat, leave my child alone. And begin to speak promise in your life. You're the best. You are born and not the least. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? I'm going to close with this. The two, one scripture on this. 